Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the second day of the Opera Euro Rapid uh, 2021 online chess online tournament. Of course, it's the rapid time control, 15 minutes per game, 10 seconds incrementation. And I would like to show you the most weighted game of this second day, where Hikaru Nakamura with the black pieces plays against Magnus Carlsen, of course, with the white pieces. Now, between these two, I actually make analysis of a lot a lot of games and the most uh, interesting where they dispute in the Berlin defense a lot of fresh ideas uh, and this this was really really insane and indeed also the YouTube algorithms uh, very often actually shows how to play the Berlin defense by Hikaru Nakamura so you can check this video it's a very very good video I'm really proud of that and for some reason <laughs> some of my my viewers watching it again and again and the new also uh, people are watching you can drop the comment if you if you see that uh, for now I would be interested in if my recommendation makes any impact on that so that would be very nice uh, but also uh, I linked over there a couple of videos how they make this dispute uh, about the Berlin defense so this is really really a nice series in the in the Rui Lopez this time we are not going to see a Berlin defense Rui Lopez because Magnus started with the d4 uh, we have knight f6 we have c4 we have e6 and now instead of playing a um, knight c3 black would have a white you know uh choice for the openings with the for example bishop b4 uh, but here Magnus usually goes for knight f3 so now the black has the limited options still of course a lot of things can be played but Hikaru usually just goes for the for the queen's gambit declined we have a knight c3 so variation of three um, of three knights we have bishop e7 and now bishop f4 now bishop f4 this move really uh, Magnus really likes it this is Harvitz attack and he also played that plenty of times also on my channel i show you a lot of games from the harvitz attack from the magnus perspective so all of the ideas if you are interested you can also check the playlist about the queen's gambit declined especially magnus carlsen games with the white pieces we have a castle and now a3 so instead of e3 which is the most popular line here we have a3 now what is the idea hikaru likes to play c5 in this kind of position so uh in this he, he went for c5 we have d takes on c5 bishop c5 and now uh, this position was actually reached like 60 times the most popular move is of course e3 but there are also a lot of games with the c takes on d5 now let's just check to understand this the, the position what can potentially happen here so if we go for exchanging in the center the game gonna be uh, a little bit more more silent uh, after exchanging uh, black usually want to play with this isolated uh, queen's pawn uh, white gonna play e3 and the game has uh, a little bit you know a silent continuation however a little bit more interesting is if e3 is played immediately because black can play knight c6 and then after queen c2 queen a a5 is a very very interesting line and this is the most popular line and a lot of very very aggressive uh, things can happen for example b4 of course is not possible you cannot take that pawn because your rook is hanging so just for your information the main idea here is actually rook d1 first uh, and then of course the game can continue a lot of interesting variations if you are interested you should check actually database for example on leeches because this is pretty nice but here magnus i idea is to actually kick that bishop so this is kind of the novelty we have bishop e7 uh, and only now e3 but now Hikaru Nakamura counter strike because it looks like white actually got this pawns uh, a little bit you know ahead uh, and he played a5 uh, trying to undermine all of this position so for example now this pawn is under attack this pawn is under attack twice uh, the rook can be of course exchanged as well 
And what is the most important, Hikaru already castle. And Magnus still needs like two moves to castle. So Hikaru now can put a lot of pressure uh, and say, hey, Magnus, you have to, you know, solve some of the problems in the center and on the queen side because you don't have a time for castle. It's another game where Magnus Carlsen really risk a bit here and where is the edge, you know, sometimes it can be too late. Uh, but for the world champion, he definitely knows what he is doing. Uh, we have C takes on D5, and now uh, this actually Hikaru could try to go for something like A takes on B4. Now with the attack on the knight, uh, and this is very interesting. Of course, White also would push this pawn, and after let's say exchanging, this could be very interesting. Probably exchanging the uh, the queens. And now this position is very, very complicated, very, very tricky. This pawn rather cannot be saved. There is no risk with the rook d8, which looks like very, very scary because the knight is defending the, the, the rook. And uh, of course, if it's, uh, you know, gonna be, a, if white tries to take it, then black gonna have a lot of time, for example, to play the knight on the on the c6. And if this knight is taken, uh, there will be no time also to take this this knight because the bishop for example can come to d7 and so on so there are a couple of ideas here uh, actually how to play that uh, but Hikaru didn't go uh, for that uh, he went for more silent continuation so we have knight d5 knight d5 and now e takes on d5 and here this position uh, Hikaru is going to play with the isolated queen pawn which is very tricky usually this is actually a very very big weakness but sometimes it also can be like kind of the uh, trampoline for your pieces to attack the position of the king uh, now, black would love to, for example, bring the bishop on this diagonal uh, and maybe support on some moment this, this pawn to, to be pushed, especially if the king is still in the center. Why not to open the position? But first, Magnus has to, of course, solve the problems on the queen side uh, because this pawn is attacked twice. So he pushed uh, the pawn even further to b5. Now, b5 is a is a pretty good move. First, of course, it's avoiding um, the losing the pawn, but also it's controlling now very very important squares now the knight cannot come to very nat natural uh, c6 and cannot support the pawn uh, so this pawn is not that easy to actually push this isolated pawn. Uh, we have knight d7, so Hikaru try, tries to find the good square now for the knight another way. Uh, and now, of course, a4 would be very bad, bad idea to just support this pawn because that would uh, make a lot of holes here. Uh, this pawn is an important defender of b4. So, for example, you know, bishop b4, and you can already see that that's gonna be a lot of troubles for the white pieces. So, better uh, to don't experiment this way. Uh, Magnus knows that so bishop e2 preparing to castle we have knight c5 so going with the knight to more active piece very often uh, this knight can find the, the square on the on the e4 for example when you have isolated queen's pawn this is the this is the pretty obvious choice uh, Magnus plays a castle and now we have another interesting choice by Hikaru because Hikaru now doesn't want to allow actually Magnus to play this a4 a4 supporting this pawn would cement all the queen side so he played by himself a4 now very interesting move because it also creates a very nice outpost for the knight uh, we have bishop e5 so magnus see that already this is a pretty interesting uh, attack by hikaru hikaru want to bring the knight maybe to the to the b3 on some moment maybe this pawn would be pushed especially if this bishop can come to this diagonal so this is why we have bishop e5 remaneuvering this bishop uh, and now knight b3 as planned and now what to do with the with the this rook um, play to a2 play to b1 usually moving the rook to a2 isn't the greatest idea this can be very very uh, vulnerable but in this case Magnus actually spent quite a lot of time and tried to anticipate what can happen in this position and he decided to play the, the rook on a2 
and the and the rook looks like pretty awkward here but it's gonna be very very useful in the future uh so we have bishop e6 now defending extra defending d5 but what is more important uh putting the bishop on the same diagonal with the rook so now you know extraying the pawn extraying this this knight and it can be very very dangerous very tricky in some moment maybe hikaru could push the pawn again uh maybe do something with the knight and that could come together with the attack on the rook so this is why we have knight d4 immediately jumping here maybe trying to eliminate the knight uh, or maybe keeping an eye on the on the bishop and maybe the most probably just uh, blocking the advancement of the of this pawn even sometimes the pawn isolated queen's pawn uh, can make a very nice um, suicidal uh, move uh, so we have bishop d6 by Hikaru Nakamura asking to exchange the, the dark square bishops. Uh... And now, for example, knight b3, it would not be the best idea here, because after a takes on b3, not only the rook is under attack, but also still this bishop is hanging. So um, definitely after queen b3, uh, bishop e5, black simply won um, the whole piece. So that's why we have knight e6, uh, and this actually allow Hikaru to create some protection for, for this isolated pawn. It's not longer isolated. So definitely uh, it's pretty good for Hikaru. Uh, we have bishop b2 now moving the bishop still staying on this diagonal and this attacks uh, very often can be um, can be of course very dangerous and now we have rook c8 developing the rook. We have also g3 so any potential attacks on the on this diagonal are not longer possible also making a space uh, for the king in the critical moment of course the king can come to g2 and there is no risk of attacking it by uh, by the light square bishop at as it was exchanged already uh, we have queen d7 maybe the queen would like to uh, you know uh, watch at the h3 but actually hikaru has another plan much more dangerous look at this we have bishop d3 so moving the bishop also on this diagonal now, now pair of bishops on these diagonals are very often dangerous but now queen f7 queen f7 so hikaru starts to actually focus on f2 and it looks like it's not that dangerous yet but it can become dangerous and now you see what magnus was planning so magnus by playing you know this rook a2 and this maneuver with the with the knight to d6 exchanging he knew that f2 gonna be you know very vulnerable uh so this is why the rook came on the a2 and now it's going to be an important defender uh, of the position now the engine suggests here to play bishop c2, but the idea is not really, I mean, it's it's maybe the best, you know, move for stockfish. However, after queen c7, what to play next? Because the main idea would be to eliminate this knight, but in this case it doesn't work because after bishop b3, a takes on b3 you can't even take this pawn because after queen c2 what you're gonna play next this is really really a bad position for for white probably lost uh if you exchange then you're gonna have the problem with this bishop uh, and with this rook they cannot move if the bishops move uh, then of course the the rook is lost uh if the rook move then the bishop is lost moreover this bishop can win the pawn on um, a3 so probably a4 would have to be played but then bishop e five and then uh black gonna win the exchange if white tries to actually defend that would be probably the worst idea because of course black are coming to them to the second rank and also attacking this bishop for the for the third time so uh, that would be completely completely losing this is why magnus tries to undermine the position of this little chain and he played e4 now e4 with the idea of exchanging the pawns and then his bishop would get much more mobility in the end game in the open positions of course the pair of bishops can be deadly uh, we have bishop c5 so focusing on this f two already three attackers um, and now we have e takes on d5 uh, and here hikaru definitely was calculating what would happen if he takes here because now this is the chance to take it however now there are ideas with the bishop g7 winning back the material and also get the um, get this bishop back 
So that, that doesn't look that uh, attractive. So this is why we have e takes on d5. And now bishop e5. So first of all, this rook is a very handy now. It's a very important defender of f2, as you already see. And this bishop can also come to f4. So block all of this attack on the f2 point. We have rook c to e8, attacking the bishop, bishop f4. And now immediately h6 with the idea g5 and kicking the bishop. So Magnus has to find some solution. And indeed, uh, he played queen g4. So... Uh, uh, of course, if black plays something like g5, that would be very, very risky, opening the position of the king. Uh, and, and even black um, doesn't threat anything because of the pin on the, on the g5. And now Hikaru brings the rook to the position. So rook e6 and where the rook's gonna land? I hope you see that already. First h4 by Magnus. So he want to take under control g5. Even the, the queen is going to move from g4. Uh, it's very vulnerable square for the for the queen. So the, the pawn on h4 is very important. We have h5 now kicking the queen, queen d1 and now rook f6. So Hikaru created extremely dangerous Aliyehin gun. Aliyehin gun. This for Formation is called a Liechin gun and it's uh, very very dangerous and very very tricky so we have king g2 and now uh Black probably should go for something like knight d4. Now, knight d4, the idea is very, very simple. With the attack on the e6, now attack on this on this bishop, uh, and, uh, and then focus, still focus on this f2, okay? So what could happen? Probably white would have to play something like bishop e5, attacking the rook. Rook probably want to stay on the f file. And then maybe after bishop b1, uh, knight f5. So another threat here with the knight e3 and that would be extremely dangerous then of course the knight couldn't be taken because of this al uh pointing on also on f1 so probably bishop f5 would be forced rook f5 um, and then white could find the move something like bishop d4 probably it's defendable by magnus carlsen but black would have a lot of pressure here uh, but hikaru wanted to preserve the the knight he plays g6, a little bit provocative because weakening the dark squares. So obviously Magnus would like to exploit that. And indeed, he played bishop h6, kicking the rook, so rook e8. And now he said, okay, I'm also, I also want to kick this rook, which is a very, very interesting choice. Now we have bishop g5, rook f to e6. And now Magnus moved this bishop, but not to b1, which is the best move in the position, but bishop c2. So it looks like he actually blunders the game because now he blocked the way of, uh, of, the, of the rook. Uh, of course, f2 is not longer, you know, under heavy fire, uh, but Hikaru immediately spotted very, very interesting tactic. And he played rook e1, deflection of the rook. Uh, which is, of course, defender of the pawn on f2. And as you already see, uh, this uh, point on f2 is attacked twice. So if the rook is moved and this rook is blocked by the bishop, then the king gonna be in the troubles. But now is the time to actually pause the video and try to, you know, play like Magnus Carlsen. And now I'm not telling you to actually, you know, defend that game. I will show you the variation where uh, everything will be fine with the white position. I would like you to find the move which is winning for white. Twist, completely twisting the position and it's winning uh, for white. So pause the video while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So first I would like to just show you if you take with the queen, this is completely losing because after rook e1, rook e1, uh, queen f2, this rook gonna be lost. So of course black is completely winning. That's the first thing. Now the second thing is if you play rook e1, it's not the bad move actually. Uh, you can uh, get to the end game, which probably gonna be slightly better for white. So for example, queen f2, this is not as dangerous as before, a uh, king h3. And now if uh, black want to exchange the queens, um, then can do it with the queen. Of course, white can avoid that and try to attack the position of the king. But it's not uh, really, really dangerous. Probably white can just simply exchange the stuff here. 
and after bishop g6 uh probably exchange a couple of more pawns and play with this three pawns against these three pawns but white would have these two pawns connected past pawns uh but the king also on the way uh, from the other hand white also have the pair of bishops which should be uh stronger so white would probably would have the the easier end game here uh so these were the options but the winning move we are looking for is actually bishop g6 congratulations if you found it hikaru Nak nakamura after seeing this move resigned from the game okay he just resigned why did he resign if he take the bishop because the the queen is under attack uh, then what we're gonna have is of course rook e1 and after uh, let's say rook e1 queen e1 of course white is completely winning here with extra exchange and also with the extra pawn uh, better pawn structure and so on so this is completely winning and also if rook d1 then the problem is that this bishop uh, take the queen with the check so black have to take with the with the king uh, and then rook d1 and again white has extra exchange and shouldn't have a problem to actually convert that uh, to the win so this is why after bishop g6 Hikaru Nakamura resigned he spotted very very beautiful deflection tactic but that was not enough that was trap Magnus Carlsen set up the trap with the bishop c2 very very beautiful trap and Hikaru just fall straight into it very very interesting very beautiful game and i would like to show you the standings after day two magnus carlsen uh, is a sole leader seven points out of ten we have also wesley soanish giri with the six and a half points jan nipomniashi six points uh, and levon aronian maxim vashil lagraf Taimur rajabov five and a half points very very solid uh, for the qualifications to the knockout um, phase eight players gonna qualify uh, hikaru nakamura jan krzysztof Dud the Alexander Grishchuk uh, of course are watching uh, trying to fight five points Vidit Gujarati four and a half Daniel Dubov also very very dangerous four and a half uh, he still can fight for the for the best of eight so uh, definitely he's you know watching at the uh at the at the best players here and will try to win in the last day uh sam shankland four points matthias bluebound three and a half points ding liren and lenier dominguez only three points so a little bit disappointing uh by ding liren ding liren had a very very bad season uh, he had however one really good online tournament where uh where he played quite a lot and now he is doing uh much better but in this tournament it's still um something doesn't work so that's are the standings and if you like this video of course press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss another games from the opera euro rapid 2021 press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one